This generation themselves is particularly evil because the world is getting worse and worse. The world is growing worse and worse. There is a eschatology. Eschatology simply means the study of the last days. There is a form of eschatology that teaches that this world is going to get better and better. It's called post-millennialism. That we Christians are going to Christianize the world and then Jesus is going to come back and we're going to hand him over a Christianized world. And the world's going to get better and better and better until we have a Christian world and hand it over to him. I, I got to say, I wouldn't hate that if that's what God had for us that we were supposed to go out and Christianize the world, but that's not what we see. Do you think things are worse than they were 50 years ago? Of course, the world's gone through some pretty incredibly dark times. There have been some things that have been really, really difficult. But listen to what Daniel 12:10 says. It says, many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise, will understand. So you've got the wicked going alongside with the purified. Revelation 22, 11. He who is just, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. So there is wickedness and righteousness in the last days. And as I said, the Bible tells us that they're growing worse. Second Timothy 3.13 says, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Humanity is gonna become more evil as time goes along. So not only do these last group of people receive the wrath of God as a type of God pouring out his wrath on all of humanity, but also as a type of them being the most evil generation that had ever lived. Let me read you a little bit more in 2 Timothy 3. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves. Now that sounds a lot like today. Lovers of money, that sounds a lot like today. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, sounds like today at a Dodgers game. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And I think that describes our world. It describes even where churches are going. Churches are teaching that we are to look within our own heart to determine how we should live and what is the right and wrong way to live. And it's been said that behind your heart is you. And the Bible says that our hearts are desperately wicked who can know them. If we are left to ourselves, then we will seek pleasure and be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now we want to be lovers of God and we still struggle. We want to be right with God and we still have difficulties. We want to be in right standing with him. We want to say to him tonight, Lord, we want to serve you, live for you, love you. And if there's anything in our lives that is wrong, then speak to us. God does that through his word. He does that through the Holy Spirit who convicts us. The word convict, by the way, doesn't mean condemn. It means convince. So the Holy Spirit is working within the, the, the church, the body of Christ, and convincing us that the things that we have been doing, maybe even justifying, are wrong. And then there's our own conscience, which God has given us that we would go, this just isn't right. Even when we justify sin, and remember, sin is deceptive, the devil's a deceiver, and the heart of man is, is, is deceptive. We can deceive ourselves. And so it's so easy for us to be doing something that we have justified and made it right, but our conscience will tell us that something needs to change. And, and you don't have to have it completely figured out when you make things completely right with God. Instead, you just say, Lord, I want to be doing what you want me to do. Help me to do that. I know I need help. We don't have what it takes to be able to please God and so we need the Spirit of God working within us. 
That doesn't mean someone who is secular can't do something to please God. We're talking about having the right heart made right because God called us and saved us. So they are lovers of God rather, um, rather than, they're lovers of the pleasure rather than lovers of God. And here we go. Having a form of godliness and denying its power from such people turn away. That'll be the last days. That's how the whole thing started off. This is in the last days. This is what men are going to be like. 